So Joseph, today we're talking about Raiffeisen. This is the Austria-based bank, but the international part of the bank, which has a lot of exposure to Central and Eastern Europe and uh, all, all places east of there. What's Raiffeisen been saying? Well, uh, pick your poison, Ukraine or Russia, which is, those are two markets in which this bank operates. Uh, um, it had a pre-tax profit last year of uh, about 830 million euros, but about 600 million of that came from Russia alone. So it's Russia exposed quite a bit, but uh, among its 130 billion assets strung across Central and Eastern Europe, as you say, that there are 15 billion in Russia, but there are also uh, just over 4 billion uh, in Ukraine itself. And there's a, the, the subsidiary which they have there, they haven't been able to sell, uh, obviously, since the Crimea crisis began. And now the question is, well, what do they do with it? And so what do you think they, they can or should do with it? And does the IMF's decision to uh, advance a loan make a, a big difference? I mean, it, it's interesting because news of that IMF bailout, and it's huge, it's, you know, 14 to 18 billion euros, um, or dollars, sorry, to the Ukrainian government, uh, should ensure that those assets in the Raiffeisen subsidiary at least avoid a complete economic collapse, which is what Ukraine was verging on until very recently. Uh, nevertheless, uh, Raiffeisen shares uh, fell more than 2% today, and they, they're, you know, they're already down a third since the Crimea crisis began, which is uh, counterintuitive to you know, what, what we've just said. Uh, and it's really, well, what can they do uh, with the subsidiary. I mean, they can't really sort of rush out and you know, they can't sell it to anyone else because, it, because of the Ukraine risk. But in particular, you know, if you are an official creditor looking at an economy like Ukraine, which has a huge you know, deficit, you know, as far as the eye can see, uh, you do not want foreign banks to be sort of putting funding away from their subsidiaries. Uh, and so it's, there is the risk that there is a quid pro quo that they, the, the banks like Raiffeisen have to sort of maintain their exposure in order to avoid a complete collapse. So it looks like it's going to have to grin and bear it in the Ukraine. How's its Russian business looking? I mean, it, it looks pretty good on paper. Like the return on equity after tax is about 25%, which is not bad considering the group as a whole is sort of targeting 15% uh, for, you know, for the future. However, like, you know, as we mentioned, like the, the, the profit share overall is quite big. Uh, Russia itself, its economy is, you know, turning pretty poorly at the moment. But really, it's the issue of, well, can you actually repatriate profits back from that uh, those Russian operations when there is sanction risk flying left, right, and centre? So that's something else that whether I think they'll have to grin and bear it for for the time being. Mm. Well, it sounds like Raiffeisen is it's stuck between uh, a rock and a hard place, as the saying goes. Joseph, thank you very much.